and welcome to this Cavco Maker tutorial where we carry on from the last video where we brought this grayscale image into Cavco Maker and we cleaned it up with the smooth relief tool. So in this tutorial we are going to construct the tool paths for this and bearing in mind this is a three feet three inches high which is a meter and so we're going to use some substantial tools to machine this so first off we go to you can get to the tool pass by going here or you can get them by going here it's 3d machine relief So we want to machine the whole relief and we're going to start with a rough in and we are going to rough out, let me see, it's wood so we need to scroll down till we come to the wood and we're going to use a, actually the bull nose that we want to use is a 12 millimeter ball mill and we're going to select this and now then this is where a lot of people have quite a few problems working out the speed and feeds now it all depends on what machine you are operating if you're operating on a small hobby machine similar to an x cab well you're probably going to struggle with a 12 millimeter so you'd probably use a six millimeter but uh, I I have a industrial machine so we're going to set the tool pass for industrial machine and pine or soft wood so step over uh, we can actually because this is a rough in we can make this a little little bigger and we can say two two millimeters probably would be fair step down um, oh we're gonna I think we're, what I'm going to do is go four millimeters feed rate you know my machine like I say is an industrial machine so I can really rip into this with a with this big tool and I can do probably 80 millimeters per second which is approximately well three and a half inches something like that just under three and a half inches plunge rate now I normally run the plunge rate at 50% of what the feed rate is so that's 40 millimeters now because you are running these figures really high the feed and plunge rate you need to increase the spindle speed to contend with it now I know through experience that we would need 18,000 rpm if you took this up to 20,000 rpm the chances are that you may start to char or burn some of the wood in some places so about 18,000 is okay I'm going to leave this as tool number one so we're going to use a standard raster in this case we want to machine in both directions so that means when the tool comes in here it's going to machine this direction and it's going to machine on the return journey uh, we'll leave that as it is now I always use ramp in moves it just stops the tool just being dug straight in and um, you know it's kinder to your, your equipment so that's what we'll do now then let's set up this safe height okay well 10 millimeters above the material is fine and I always set the both of these the same now the reason I set it at 10 millimeter 
is because I always set my Z0 on the top of the material, not the machine bed. If it was the machine, if I was setting it on the machine bed, then I would, whatever the material thickness is, 50 millimeter, whatever it is, I would then increase this to 60 millimeter. To be doubly sure, I'm going to say 50 millimeters, which is which is you know roughly two inches, and just checks. Okay, model position and zero top of the block. And we're going to okay that. And I abbreviate everything, but as long as you can understand what it is, it's fine. Okay, so there's our roughing tool pass. I like to do this in two separate um, sections then. I mean, there is a facility here. We go back into the 3D machining. Kafka does have a facility where you can do the finishing and the roughing. Just personal preference, I like to do it separately. Okay. Now, for something this size, probably a. Oh, I'm going, going to do this with a 3mm ball mill. So I'm going to select that tool um, Classic raster should be fine So let's So now we're going to set up the cut for this tool like three of a millimeter that's that's fine otherwise there's going to be a million tool pads uh, if I'd have set this at point one or something like that so for a, a model of this size this is fine step down now to make sure that we do this in one pass I'm going to set this at five millimeters and we're going to do 60 millimeters of feed rate per second and 30. I normally set the plunge rate at 50% of what the feed rate is. Okay, now then, because we're pushing the tool at 60 millimeters per second, we need to raise this up substantially. So we're going to say 24,000 RPM. Uh, this will ensure of a good clean cut and uh, you know removing all the swarf as well. So this is um, we're going to call it tool number two. Although I do not have a tool changer on my machine. Okay. This is all okay. We're going to leave it all as it is. And here we're going to say this is. Um, I abbreviate eight everything. Finishing. So this is cut two. I uh, say three millimeter ball mill. And now we're going to calculate. And there it is, an awful lot of tool pads there. So we're going to come out of this now, and now we're going to simulate. Now I like to, the simulating tool is there, but I actually like to get at it 
from here. And there it is. I've got this set on fast simulate and <laughs> believe it or not, that was two tool pairs. I've got quite a quick computer. It's a fairly modern computer. And now what we're going to do is if I open simulate there again it opens this dialog box where you can change the material. At the moment it's in something like pewter. So now what we're going to do, we're going to say um, rose gold no. And there's a big listing of of um, polished brass. That might be a little bit reflective. Let's have a look. Apply. Yeah, a little bit too reflective. It looks more silver than brass because it's polished, I suppose. And now oh, there's the pewter. And then we come into the woods. I mean, doing it in wood would be okay too, but I quite like the representation of oh, bronze. Here we go. Okay. Now I I quite the, like the look of bronze for this young lady. If we move the 3D model around, you can see that it is fairly fairly reasonable considering we took this as a grayscale straight off the internet put into the entry level of Cavco which is Cavco Maker and I will remind people that Cavco Maker is $90 and on top of that you get an additional 5% discount with my discount code which is at the end of this video and underneath this video above the comment section. So the next job to do now is to save the toolpaths. Now a lot of people have some problems with this so I'm going to show you exactly what to do. So what I do is go on to toolpaths here which opens up this dialog box and you go onto the icon for a floppy disk and you will find the toolpaths here so we're going to put them both over onto this side for the moment and we're going to say okay first one and we're going to put it on the desktop uh, make a test one make a test Two, cut one. Now then, I'm going to show you how to save this in a standard G-code file. So you open this up, and you can scroll. You know, there is literally hundreds hundreds and hundreds of different machines that Kafka has specific code for. It is Haas and yes you can do metal machining very well with Kafka. and in future tutorials I will show you how to do it. Really these the difference between cutting or machining metal uh, and machine in wood obviously is the speed feeds and step overs and we will come into that um, it'll save it in mark even mark <laughs> mark rotary axes it's a bushy anyway the list goes on and on uh, Roland you know, these are all post processes that, that have been made specifically for 
these machines and I brought you all the way down here to show you Tormac. I've had a number of people every week ask me if it will post code for the Tormac and here it is. There's Tormac. So we'll go back up here. Now if you have a router machine that isn't listed in here you come all the way down to uh, where are we? G G G G here we go now this is standard G code these two you can either depending on how your machine is set up if your machine is set up in inches and your opera you're actually calculating in inches in Kafka. This is the one that you would use. It says G code inch tap. Every machine will understand this G code. In my case, millimeter. So it's G code millimeter tap. So if you have a imported or locally made or one that you've put together this is the one to use so we're going to save that and it's as quick as that put this one back finishing cut test to cut to like I say I always say I abbreviate every oh, did that wrong didn't I so it's, um, oh, we're just going to put test cut two and save before you lose it again. <laughs> okay. And that's it. Of course, those codes now are on my desktop. And one day I may, may machine this as well because I think it's a, a beautiful figure beautiful figure and of course this is going to be quite large and I think it uh, it would be you know really really nice to be hanging on someone's wall okay well thank you for joining me for this tutorial this uh, second half of this one has been um, quite lengthy but uh, I think you uh, you know, I like to put everything I can into these videos. Sometimes they're 30 or 40 minutes long. It's unavoidable. Uh, so, thank you for joining me. And if there's something in particular that you would like to see, please uh, leave a comment. Um, and I'll see what I can do. Don't forget that the calf code discount code will be coming up at the end of this video. And underneath this video in the comment section and uh, if you would like to visit my patron page and become a patron that would be also great so press like subscribe and please join me next time bye for now